Hey guys, Tony DeNaro here. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. In light of Sundial pushing out their earnings to May 2022, I know some of you got to be wondering like me, why do they keep on pushing out this earnings call? We're going to talk about that today. I'm going to sneak in a quick due diligence update for Sundial. We're going to talk about both the good and the bad and what I think might happen in May. Let's get right into it. Looking back at Sundial over the last 16 to 18 months, it did have a high just over $2, currently trading at around 53 cents. And I know a lot of retail was really interested in this play at the beginning of last year, and many of you are still in it. Maybe some of you paid more than the price of what the stock is currently worth. And you want to know what is going to happen with this stock. Is it ever going to squeeze? Is there a chance that this stock is going to come back up? I'm going to disclose to you that I have been saying for the past nine or 10 months since I started my channel to wait and pick up Sundial below 50 cents to reduce the risk exposure to holding this stock for the long term if you really like it. Now, some of you already own it and you don't have that luxury, but I did recently pick up Sundial at 49 cents, so I am on board with you now. Let's look at what is going on with this stock. And as always, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not your financial advisor. And the views expressed in this video are my opinions only on what I am doing with my portfolio. So let's get right into the Sundial information. Sundial was originally supposed to post their quarterly earnings in the middle of April 2022. That would be the Q4 2021 earnings and the annual earnings for 2021. And they did have some accounting issues that they needed to work through. Sundial applied for and got an extension to file their Q4 and annual earnings on April 29th of this year, April 29th, 2022. And we are expecting now that the quarterly call will be on or before May 10th. So we're less than a month away. What is causing all of these delays? Well, there's been quite a bit of activity going on in Sundial with acquisitions and such. Let's do a quick recap. Sundial just completed the acquisition of Alcana on March 31st, 2022, and they also had the acquisition of Spirit Leaf in July of 2021. So that is all part of what is factoring into this delay. There's a lot more accounting that they had to do in order to get this report completed. What else has been going on in the news? Well, if you haven't been paying attention on April 1st, the U.S. House of Representatives passed the MORE Act, that is the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act. It passed on a vote of 220 to 204, largely on party lines. And I know a lot of you are wondering what is going on with the U.S. Senate. Is there a chance of marijuana being federally legalized in the United States? We were expecting some action in April from Chuck Schumer's bill in the Senate, although the latest news that I was able to get over this weekend is that it's probably not going to happen in April. Although Senator Schumer is saying that he does expect to get this act on the floor in the Senate before they go into recess in the first part of August. So we got a couple months left to get some news from the Senate, although broadly across everybody in the community and the media and Wall Street, we are not expecting that this act will pass in the Senate, but you never know. Stay tuned and let's keep an eye on that one. So speaking of acquisitions, let's talk about that real quick. Sundial did recently complete this acquisition of Alcana. Alcana is one of the largest private sector retailers of alcohol in North America and the largest in Canada by number of stores operating locations in Alberta and British Columbia. With this acquisition of Alcana, it does bring the total number of retail locations for Sundial to over 180. Let's take a quick look at those numbers. With the Spirit Leaf acquisition in July of 2021, they got 108 locations. And with the addition of Alcana, although it is an alcohol retailer, they did pick up some additional cannabis stores. How is that possible? Well. Alcana is a majority owner of another company called Nova Cannabis. They have a 63% majority stake in Nova Cannabis, which now Sundial has that majority ownership. And Nova Cannabis has a total of 78 locations. So you add up the Spirit Leaf outlets and the Nova Cannabis outlets, you get over 180 
retail outlets that Sundial can sell their product at. In addition to that, Alcana does have the liquor retail outlets and now Sundial owns those. They go under the trade names of Wine and Beyond, Liquor Depot, and Ace Liquor. These three outlets combined are 171 locations and that means that Sundial has now become Canada's largest private sector liquor retailer. Let's move on and talk about the challenges that Sundial faces. First of all, being the stock value. Since 2019, when Sundial went public, it has lost over 90% of its value. I'm gonna put the chart up here so we can look at it together and look at some of the highlights and what's happened to this stock. In 2019, Sundial did reach a peak of $13.20 when it was listed. It struggled all through 2019 and 2020. In November of 2020, it had fallen as low as 13 cents, although it did get a resurgence in February. Many of you participated in that, and it went up to about $4. That is this peak right here in the middle of the chart. Since then, Sundial has been struggling, although it has had a couple of peaks and valleys in the meantime since February of 2021. It's currently sitting at about 53 cents as we sit here today in April of 2022. Now, I know a lot of you are wondering, how does a stock fall from $13 to 50 cents in just a matter of a couple of years? Well, it all comes down to one very simple concept, and that is profitability or the lack of it in this case. Sundial has been losing money since 2019, although in the most recent quarter that they reported, Q3, they did see a positive earnings per share of one penny. That is the first positive quarter that Sundial has had since they went public, but at least it does offer a glimmer of hope that maybe they have turned the corner. One of the other things that investors look at in analyzing this company that has been driving the price down is their negative cash flow. Yes, Sundial did dilute and offer a bunch of additional shares out into the market and build up a pretty good war chest of cash, but they are burning through that cash and they do have a negative cash flow. One other little interesting nugget of information is that Sundial also made a loan to a cannabis edibles company called Indiva. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong but they are getting a very high interest rate on this loan that they made to this other company, uh, upwards of, I think now 15%. And that is throwing cash back to Sundial to the tune of $197,000 a month in interest payments. It's kind of a small drop in the bucket and it is dependent on this company in Diva not going bankrupt and they have struggles of their own. But in the meantime, this deal is throwing some cash in the direction of Sundial and this loan matures in February of 2024. Moving on to the next challenge and if you have been following this stock, I'm sure it's one that you are not unfamiliar with, it is the threat of being delisted for being under the stock price of $1. Not the first time Sundial's been here, they did face this threat back in 2020. And here we are again. Sundial has been under $1 for a considerable amount of time. They did get an extension and they have a date of August 8th, 2022, at which point their stock must be before this date, over $1 for 10 consecutive trading days. Well, what happens if they don't get over a dollar for 10 trading days? Well, the common solution to this problem that companies do is called a reverse stock split, in which case they would reduce the number of shares on the market. Let's say they did a one for 10 reverse split. So they'd go from 2 billion shares out on the market down to 200 million and they would increase the price from $1 to $10. Mathematically, that is no change to the shareholders. You still have the same dollars amount in your brokerage account, but your shares would decrease and the value of those shares would increase. And that gets Sundial off the hook with this issue of being under $1. Unfortunately, the stock market in general frowns upon reverse stock splits, but if Sundial does not increase organically, before August, this is probably going to be something that they have to do. Sometimes when I talk about this, people say, yes, but what about the fact that Sundial is doing a share buyback? And that is true. Sundial board did approve in November, 2021, a share buyback program. Unfortunately, that share buyback program only allows them to buy back 100 million shares. That would be 5% of the float. 
There is no mandatory obligation for the board to buy back their shares. They can do that when they want, at the time of their choosing, at the price of their choosing. And I'm afraid that that is just not going to be enough to get the stock over $1 just looking at the share buyback by itself. Although, if they are buying back shares, that is still a plus for investors overall. All right, all right, I know that is enough with the challenges, enough bad news, Tony. What I really want to know is, is Sundial going to squeeze? Is it a short squeeze candidate? Is it going to run with all the other meme stocks? Let's talk about that for a second. Is Sundial going to short squeeze? Just looking at the facts that we have in front of us, the outstanding shares out there in the market is slightly over $2 billion. The short interest currently is sitting at 9.73% or 268 million shares on loan. The utilization rate is at 75%, and the cost to borrow is at 4.15%. Based on this information and based on no evidence that I have in front of me of synthetic shares, I've got to say that at this point, Sundial is not a short squeeze candidate, but that does not mean that it won't be able to run up based on any sort of good news retail sentiment, FOMO, what have you, there is plenty of potential for Sundial to make a move up. I do not think that it's a short squeeze candidate. This is my opinion. And I do not think that it moves in tandem with other meme stocks. Really what I'm looking for as an owner now of Sundial at 49 cents is the ability to participate in the next run up of Sundial. And that could come from good news, that could come from Congress. That could come from a good quarterly earnings announcement from Sundial. It could come from a bunch of even pump and dumpers out there who are accumulating at a really low price right now. And then out of the blue, decide to talk up the stock on Twitter, Reddit, what have you, and run the price up. So when that happens, I will be moving out of my position. And I do anticipate that at some point in the near future, there will be one of these run-ups. It might be weeks, it might be months, but I do think that there will be another one. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about the wrap-up. Why did I buy Sundial in the first place? What do I think is going to happen in the quarterly earnings announcement coming up? And what is going to happen to Sundial over the coming months or year or two? My outlook on Sundial is this is a neutral to very speculative play. I will continue to accumulate additional shares of Sundial if it drops below 50 cents. In the short term, the earnings call coming up on May 10th is the key thing that we're going to be watching on Sundial. That is really going to set the direction for this stock. If the earnings are more than a penny, if they're positive, then this stock could get a very good run up just based on that news alone. If the earnings are not so good, well, then I expect Sundial is going to go down. They have a lot of moving parts going on right now with all of these acquisitions. And over the long term, if they're able to hold all of this together, they could be very well positioned for long-term growth. But Wall Street is going to want to see some actual positive earnings out of this company for it to get back its old glory days. So stay tuned for the May earnings announcement and the ones subsequent to that. Depending on what happens in May and the news that we get out of May and what happens with the stock price, well, if it doesn't go over a dollar in May, then we are facing a reverse stock split. I think that that is a foregone conclusion if this upcoming quarterly call is bad to neutral. Personally, now that I own Sundial, I am hoping that we get another quarterly earnings that is positive, like the one that we just got last time they reported their earnings. That's going to wrap it up for the due diligence State of the Union address on Sundial. It's good and bad. This is a speculative play for me. Although it is speculative, I do wish every one of you who are holding Sundial stock great success with this play. Sundial has a lot of challenges in front of it, but the story is not over just yet. Let's touch base again on Sundial after they report earnings in May. I am Tony DeNaro. Please join me daily during my live streams at Market Open and Market Close 
where I can talk to you about Sundial or any stock that you have questions about. I've been a trader for about 30 years and I'm happy to answer your questions. No super chats required. Don't forget to buy and hold that subscribe button. Hit a like on the way out the door and I will see you on the next video. Think that I'm afraid, but I don't break.